Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yi Quan Chang. I'm a junior faculty member at ASIAA in Taiwan. And today I would like to tell you about a new and more accurate galactic dust reddening map that I recently constructed by tomographically correcting for the extra galactic contamination in the widely used Schlegel et al. or SFD dust reddening map. So the material I'm going to cover today is on this paper that I recently put on archive. So if you're interested in the detail, uh, please feel free to take a look. Okay, uh, let's get started. So first of all, let's acknowledge the fact that uh, there's dust in the Milky Way ISM pretty much everywhere. So uh, because we live inside the Milky Way, so extinction correction is needed for basically all extragalactic photometry from the UV to optical to near infrared. There are three main ways to probe dust reddening field on the sky or to make a galactic dust map. Uh, this corresponds to the three spectral features that I have on this plot. Main method uh, widely used is the infrared dust thermal emission. This usually gives us relatively high signal to noise dust mapping. And then the second method is in the UV and optical. Uh, because there the extinction effect is strong, so if we can find a set sample of background sources with calibratable colors, for example stars or sometimes galaxies, we can use that to probe foreground reddening. The third method is the indirect method. Uh, if we can observe the 21 centimeter to trace a neutral gas, H1, we can use that to probe dust reddening, but accuracy of course will be modulated by the spatially varying dust to gas ratio. The most widely used Milky Way dust map, of course, has been the Schlegel, Finbinder, and Davis, or SFD dust map. So many of you are probably already familiar with SFD. It is constructed by mostly using the IRAS 100 micron intensity map. There is a minor temperature correction using uh, Kobe Derby data. And by eyes, we can see uh, these very strong galactic gradients in EP minus V. And there are a bunch of beautiful uh, dust series on high latitude as well. The typical reddening value on high latitude is about 20 millimag. And of course, SFD map has been instrumental for observational cosmology and astronomy uh, in the optical and UV near infrared. The angular resolution is about six arc minutes. And for the most part, SFD is already very accurate and high signal to noise. There is, however, one major issue that has been discovered and rediscovered in the literature that the SFD is contaminated by the cosmic infrared background, the CIB. So this is perhaps unsurprising because the CIB or dusty galaxy has very similar SCD with the uh, galactic dust. So why is this CIB contamination an issue, right? As it turns out, if we use uh, SFD to do extinction correction for extragalactic objects, because of this CIB contamination, every time the extinction will be overcorrected around the locations of galaxies. Moreover, um, the level of this overcorrection is spatial and redshift dependent, which become a systematic in precision cosmology looking for redshift dependent or angular dependent features. So back in 2019, I did a paper with Brice Menard to discuss how these extinction correction biases can be propagated into different cosmological probes. And what we found is that roughly speaking, there is about a percent level biases in probes like supernova 1A distances, or, uh, for example, a lensing magnification. For people who are interested in the details, please feel free to take a look at this paper. And today, I would like to tell you a new development in controlling this dust map systematics for future cosmology experiments. So I think if we want a once-for-all solution, what we need is a map-level reconstruction of the CIB so that we can subtract it out from the original SFD reddening field to get a purely galactic reddening field. So if you think about the CIB reconstruction, it's actually a daunting task, right? Uh, because basically this means that we need to know every bright spot of 100 micron emission that is not galactic, but extra galactic. And the fact that we didn't know it before is of course because these extra galactic sources are not resolved in the far infrared data that we have. For people who work on CMB experiments or intensity mapping analysis, you might recognize that the setup of this question is exactly the component separation problem, right? So in many experiments, we wish to split our data product into different layers along a line of sight. And today I will show a method that might be applicable to a wide range of component separation. So this new method of component separation take a two-step process. The first step is to understand the CIB on the statistical level. 
And of course, because we know that in SFD, since the Milky Way foreground, the galactic dust, is still much, much stronger than the CIV. So to understand CIV statistic, we need to rely on cross correlations. So what we need is not just cross correlation. In fact, the intrinsic CIV statistics is extremely high dimensional because uh, the universe is relatively evolving and spatially dependent. So to fully describe CIV, we essentially need to have the P of K or W theta, the angular correlation function at all redshift that the CIV contributes significantly to, for example, 100 micron data that goes into SFD. For these cross correlations, I compile a large set of reference objects from Sloan, BOSS, and EBOSS. So these are 2.7 million spectroscopically confirmed galaxies and quasars, all the way up to Z of 3. Having these reference sources, what I did then was to cross correlate the EB minus V field and SFD with the location or over densities of the reference sources, tomographically as function of redshift and angular scale. So this way we can derive a set of very descriptive statistics for the CIB in SFD. So after a lot of effort on trying to optimize the signal to noise of the cross correlation and also trying to suppress the foreground via some mitigation scheme, here are the cross correlation results that I got. So these are a set of 1D and 2D tomographic statistics. So the 1D one is simply an excess extinction value within 10 arc minute scale around the reference galaxies as function of redshift. So this is a redshift tomography, similar to clustering redshift measurement. And then the bottom panel shows a 2D tomography. So here I use a lower redshift uh, resolution from the upper panel. But in addition, we also scan over a range of angles or so angular scales. So here the estimator is a compensated filter. So basically the excess extinction value in the inner disk minus that in the outer ring. So this is a way that is more robust against fluctuating foreground. But you can see that the CIB axis is detected up to roughly about redshift 3, and then the empathy of CIB is stronger uh, at low redshift. This is, of course, only in the 100 micron. And on the bottom panel, we can see that the angular extent of the CIB clustering effect is uh, detected up to about 10 degrees. So having these high dimensional tomographic statistics to describe CIV, now we are ready to get into the second stage of the analysis, which is trying to reconstruct CIV on the map level. So in fact, this is even a harder task than measuring the statistic, because the CIV that we see on the sky is not the random field at the end, right? So the orientations of the cosmic web, and for example, the Fourier phases of the matter density field has to be coming from a very specific set of initial condition, the random C. To get this kind of field level information, the only method that I can think of is to rely on data, right? so basically template. If we can find a set of very diverse galaxy populations to form a set of large structure template map, then we can write down a simple linear expression to say that, okay, my CIB reconstruction is a linear combination of the template. And then these C sub i, the weights, will be determined by trying to match the statistical property that we measured before. So the idea is to basically use galaxy density field as the loss structure template to reconstruct the CIB. And these template galaxies don't need to be the same population with the far infrared bright galaxies that contribute to the 100 micron CIB. But the most important thing is that no matter what kind of galaxies we use, they do share the same underlying dark matter density field with the CIB. So um, to meet the major criteria, which is basically to cover the CIB redshift up to Z of three, over the full sky, the only suitable data that we can use is uh, the sources from WISE survey in the near infrared. So in WISE, we can identify almost half billion sources that are not point sources, for example, removing uh, Gaia point sources, and so these half billion sources should be securely galaxies and therefore extra galactic. And with wise data sets, we can slice them into wise colors. With a small subset, we also use photo as information, but only use to slice subsamples. And for each subsample, I can create a nearly full sky map or at least cover the most high level area, which is our uh, larger structure template. And we want to have many, many of them to cover uh, sufficient diversity of, for example, angular clustering and also redshift range 
to reconstruct the CIB. To appreciate the difference between the extragalactic large structure template and the Milky Way foreground, here I zoom into a region right south of the large magnetic cloud to show a spur of the galactic series. And then in the large structure template that I'm going to show, you will see that uh, the background will not have this kind of a distinct feature of the Milky Way dust. Now I'm going to show you the large structure templates that I constructed. So this is a movie that looked over the template ID. In total, I have 180 large structure templates. These are constructed from the overdensity field of 30 wise galaxy subsamples. And there is another procedure to augment the beam size to have six different smoothing scales. This beam augmentation is necessary for the set of large structure templates to be a complete basis set for the CIV because the CIV might have different angular clustering compared to the wise galaxies that we use. Having constructed these larger structure templates, the next step is actually to try to measure the tomographic statistics for every single one of these templates in the exact same way as we did to measure the CIV in SFB. So here is a movie with uh, these 1D and 2D tomographic statistics overlaid on top of the template. You can see that each different template has a different redshift distribution. Sometimes there could be bimodality or very broad peak, and sometimes very orderly. And in the bottom panel, you can see that in every group of six templates, because of our bin augmentation, so uh, the peak angular clustering scale is moving from small to large scale. So that's exactly what we want to create a diversity of angular clustering that can reproduce the property of the CIV. So these informations, very high dimensional and very computing extensive, are necessary for us to reconstruct the CIV. The redshift information that I use here is not photos at all. So these are basically clustering redshift information, which is almost model independent. So having all these tomographic statistics measured for SFD and also every single template that I have, now we're finally ready to do the CIV reconstruction. So remember that the CIV field is just going to be a linear combination of the large structure templates. And that means uh, I have 100 templates, so I have 100 C sub I to fit. And of course, the fitting is done simultaneously. And what I want to optimize is just to mimic the statistical SFD, which is shown on the blue data point on the plot, the target SFD statistics. And in this movie, you are going to see that when I add one group of template at a time, you see the, for example, redshift distribution goes up to match the SFD redshift distribution, and the angular clustering also kind of grow to fill that space that we previously detected in SFD. And on the lower right, you can see the zoom in of these reconstructed density field slowly growing to be the final CIV reconstructed map. And of course, the foreground Milky Way does spur is not there because this is purely extra galactic. Okay, um, finally, after we reconstruct the CIV field on the map level to get a clean Milky Way foreground dust reddening field, we can just subtract the CIV field from the SFD EP minus V. This way, we get the new and corrected SFD dust map that we call the CSFD. Now we can zoom into smaller scales to more clearly see the features between the three maps. Um, this is a 20 degree field centered on the random patch of the sky on high latitude with a few clouds of Milky Way series that you can see in both SFD and CSFD. But nicely, in the reconstructed CIV map on the right hand side, we don't see this foreground feature. Right? That is because all our larger structure templates are strictly extragalactic, they are built from galaxies. Therefore, the CIV field is truly foreground free. CSFD looks very similar to SFD by eyes. Of course, this is because the CIV correction is relatively small compared to the Milky Way foreground. It is only about a few percent level correction per pixel. Nonetheless, this few percent correction is what is going to make the CSFD dust map more ready for future cosmology experiments. On small scale, the CIV fluctuation should be mostly gone in the CSFD dust map. Therefore, it should be more purely galactic. So to validate and see if the CIV cleaning is effective, we should use some external data. 
So here I'm showing a set of images stacks on the EV metric value in SFD on top and CSFD on the lower row. From left to right, the center of these images are Gaia stars, Sloan galaxies, two mass galaxies, and Gaia AGNs. So basically, all the uh, three samples on the right are extra galactic objects. And you can see that um, these objects are significantly detected in SFD. Therefore, uh, there's a strong CIV contamination. And these contaminations are mostly gone uh, with the new map in the CSFD. So now I'm showing another set of similar stacks, but now on DESI target. So these are photometric DESI targets from the bright galaxy sample, luminous red galaxies, emission line galaxies, and quasars. Again, we see that uh, in all the four DESI targets, which are extragalactic, the CIV contamination is clearly detected. So this means that if we use the SFD dust map to do extinction correction for DESI, uh, it will propagate into the final cosmology result, for example, biasing small scale clustering like uh, neutrino mass constraints and so on. And uh, nicely, in the new CSFD dust map on the lower panel, uh, the CIB contamination is mostly gone. Right, but indeed, there is a small but non zero residual, for example, in the two mass galaxy stack and the BGS stack in CSFD. So as it turns out, I think what happened is that although my procedure do completely remove the two halo term, the so-called two halo term clustering CIB, because things are done in terms of course correlation, but then uh, there is a small part of one halo term residual that cannot be perfectly removed because we simply just have not resolved the CIB directly in the far infrared. So that's the origin of this small residual. There is another interesting feature in the DESI stack, especially the higher redshift ones. For example, in ELG, you see that the, these faint targets are preferentially selected in low dust column region, right? Or you can say that they are incomplete in more dusty patch of the sky. And so because this is actually a real selection effect, so having this information in CSFD actually is the first step trying to model the selection effect, right? So basically we need to put this um, selection effect into the random catalog in DESI. So with that, I will stop here and pull out my conclusions. In this work, I created and released a new galactic dust reddening map called CSFD, the corrected SFD. This is done by tomographically correcting for the CIB contamination in SFD, and the new map should be more ready for cosmology analysis in the future. And along the process, there is also an interesting byproduct, the reconstructed CIB map, which might also be of interest for some people in the community. There is a data release website. If you want to take a look, please scan this QR code. Thank you very much for your attention.